Hi guys, it's Lisa, back with another video for Lisa Wise Designs. And we are on our last day. We're in the home stretch of making our fall crate and our fall mini album. And when I left you yesterday, this is where we were. We have gotten the front and the back done and then these top panels laid out. So let's see where we left off. We are on the middle of page 15. And if you're joining us today and you do not know what I am talking about, just go back a few videos to the first uh, part of this series, the Fall Crate and Mini Album. And if you want to know where you can get the cutting guide or the kit to make everything that you've seen here, there's a link in the description to my Etsy shop and it'll take you right there. It's easy peasy. Let's keep going. Let's work now. We're gonna go from left to right on the bottom. So here is our sample of what we've done so far. This is what the top would look like if you're using those four by six cards that's in your kit to hold your spot for your photos. And this is what it looks like if you have a photo on there. I thought that might be fun for you to see um, how it goes both ways. So this is what we're gonna work on next. We're gonna have a, a vertical photo here and a sticker and a strip. We're gonna uh, finish up our pocket that we cut a few videos ago and then have a photo here. This is another really good place for personalization. There were two pocket cards and I believe they were side by side. One that has a really country looking lady and one that has a scarecrow. So if you liked her better than the scarecrow, I would cut that one out because it was the same dimensions. So this is going to go like this. This is me and my much older sister. She will kill me if she ever watches this video and hears me saying that. <laughs> She's not much older, but she is older than me. A lot of people think that we are the same age. Uh, I love that when I was younger, right? I really wanted to be older. So we're going to grab this truck sticker and any larger sticker will do. And you want to kind of see if you are planning this with your photos if you want this sticker or a different one, but I still love this one, and I think it will still do well here on the bottom with these. I'm looking, looking, looking. I really like this one too. Look at this fall one. Oh, y'all don't kill me if I if I uh, throw a, a wrench in the in it. No, I won't do that to you. I'm gonna make it just like the other one. But that is really pretty, isn't it? So find a scrap of your um, craft cardstock. I'm flipping through mine now. And let me see if this is big enough for my truck. Yeah, oh yeah, plenty big enough. Okay, I just put my truck down on there. And I'm gonna do the same technique that I did a few videos ago. I'm just gonna kind of sketch out where I want to cut because I'm not the greatest fussy cutter in the world and I feel much better if I have a rough drawing of the line that I want to cut out. Because if I get to talking or get off a little bit, I can always go back and draw another line in just like this one's way too close. But you can't do that once it's cut, right? Okay, still waiting on me some better. Fussy cut scissors. I promise by the next set of videos, that package is gonna be here. So I have something else to compare it to. Um, oh, and somebody mentioned to me when I was talking about what other scissors I could look at was the Tim Holtz or the Ranger. I think it's Tim Holtz name brand, three Ranger. Uh, the Habit Haberdashery scissors. The ones that do not have the serrated edge, but they're you know kind of the small ones like this. So I did look into those and I've ordered a pair of those also. So I'm gonna find me a pair of scissors. I'm gonna have those scissors and the cutter bees. And I'm gonna put those bad boys head to head and see which ones I like. I got to find something that I feel comfortable with fussy cutting. And if I don't feel comfortable with it, well, then I'm just gonna know it's just me. <laughs> and I need to really learn my skin and cut better, I guess, if it's just me. But anyway, there we go. I really love these pictures. I'm sure as I get older, I'll love them even more because, right, we were 
Every time I look at them, I'm like, oh my gosh, we were so young there. Look how young the kids were. I wish I could say, oh, look how thin we were. <laughs> so if you are, before I forget, if you are putting your four by six photo here, um, and, uh, okay, let me start over. If you're putting your four by six paper here to hold your spot for your four by six photo, which actually you're gonna take down a half of an inch, don't glue the sticker all the way. Just glue it as much as you can that's on the, um, the leaf paper, if that makes sense. Just about halfway or three quarters, of, I mean, sorry. I'm gonna get it right in a minute. A quarter of the way on your truck so that you could come back in and put your picture if you needed to. You know, sometimes I know what I'm saying, but I can't get it out. I don't know if everybody else is that way. So see like this one. So I could take this off and still have a place to put my photo and not have to try to rip the sticker up. So just kind of keep that in mind if you're not putting your pictures in as you go, which I'm sure most of you will not be because I did not the first time I was going through this process. Let's see, that one went by really quickly. So now the center panel. We're down on the bottom of page 15. You've got your dimensions there to cut. So... I cut this little house scene, and I did do some selective cutting. Let me move this up. Because I wanted these little pumpkin patch in here, and I knew that right here I was gonna have my um, pocket. So I kind of took a little bit, whichever way it was, top or bottom off, to kind of start right here. But you don't have to be that fiddly with it. I just am sometimes. Sometimes I think things are worth it, sometimes not. So move this here just gonna glue this straight down I'm going to add some glue around this I really want to get a good stick around that and try to get that as flat as I can it won't be perfect but I'm gonna need some extra stick to kind of get this to stick down here because it is not flat we are gonna put a pocket here, but we do want to have a good stick. So, as long as you get it in the center stuck down, if this is puckering up, which mine is, that's okay, we can reach that and we can put a little more glue there. Just be careful how much, because you know it's probably gonna come back out, get too much. That's not bad. So it's not gonna matter, this is going to be underneath the pocket, but we do want to have it glued into place. So if you got a little wrinkle, it's not a big deal. So let's go ahead and get our pocket. This was the D piece that we made a couple of videos ago. So we already mitered and had our tape on. And so we're gonna fold it to the back. We're gonna take the tape off and it's going to go flush with the bottom of that pattern paper. So just make sure your corners are pretty good. There's not a lot of overlap. Ideally, there would be no overlap, but you know, we're not perfect, but we're gonna try to make as few layers as possible. There you go. And put my D. I'm gonna put that bottom piece that has the tape on it flush with the pattern paper as close as I can. And push that down, just like that. There you go. And now you have another piece that tells you where to be cut on 15, the bottom of 15, and we're going to glue that on top of the pocket. So you can see how this mirrors this. Kind of helps the eye flow. Just like the reason I picked this paper was because of this here. You're gonna see this like over here. So a lot of people have asked me in the past, you know, about designing. Why does mine not look like yours when I try to pick my papers? You know, how come my pattern on top of pattern is a hot mess where yours looks good? Well, I don't necessarily think mine looks great all the time, but I do have like these unwritten rules. It's kind of in my head of how things should flow. You know, you don't need to have 12 different patterns coming straight down. You know, if just because this and this matches, that helps have a cohesive look. 
you may not register that or the person looking at it's not going to register oh these two pieces of paper are the same it kind of brings that together type thing okay see how quickly this is coming along I'm so excited so I think this needed something here so I chose the sticker that's way up here that's a little tab it says autumn I like the shape of this one a lot for where I wanted to put it so if you want to choose the same one ink the edges up that kind of helps it stand out and I'm going to put it right here in the bottom left corner right where this checkered pattern paper ends so I'm just gonna kinda of put it right in the corner, flush with that. All right, so this is going to go in the pocket. This is a pocket card that I cut out and it's gonna be a little too tall to fit in here, so I'm just gonna trim it down. I'm gonna take down what I absolutely need to to make it work. So what I did in the sample is where it says Farmer Gordon's, I'm sorry, Farmer Gordon, we're just gonna have to take you off because you're just too long, so that part's gotta go. And on the bottom where it says, thank you for your business, kind of right where that is, I'm gonna take that off, and then I'm gonna see if that works. So yes, so we've got plenty of room now for that. So just, just check yours and see how much you wanna take off what you're willing to part with and what you're not <laughs> type thing. Let me kind of see where, yeah, that works good. Kind of what I did last time because I had it in my mind, that photo, I wanted to go there. So the Distress Ink around here, and you're never gonna miss it. You're never gonna miss that top and the bottom. No one's ever gonna know. Because when you ink it up, it hides all that, right? Like, oh, there should be something there. No. So I'm gonna use the back part as a mat for my photo. So I'm gonna ink both sides up because of that. Okay. So, these two pictures are gonna go in a tag, but I'm gonna save those because we're gonna do tags at the very end. So I'm gonna put those in there. I'm gonna grab my black pen. And I had written somewhere some notes of where we were. All right, here's my chicken scratch. So I think this is really perfect place to do your journaling. So we were at Samford University, Birmingham. Alabama in the fall of 2017. I'm shut my shades, it's getting dark. I don't like people looking at me. So the oldest of my uh, my child, I was trying to think here, C-A-I-T-L-Y-N, she was 19, and Jack, whose whole name is Jackson, was 13 and Grace was 16. I always like to do that with the kids to see their age and I never do that with adults because you know after you get out of your mid-20s no one really wants to know how old they are anymore. <laughs> we just kind of stopped counting if we could I think. So I love this picture. My daughter does her own hair and it's so long and so beautiful and she can braid and she can curl she can straighten she's self-taught and she's done a lot look how pretty really pretty picture so I put that there we're going to come back and do a couple more tags here so let's move on to the right hand side oh yeah this is where scarecrow is I would have, you know sometimes scarecrows can be uh scary looking but i think this one's adorable this is the lady I was talking about. It says, Coco time. <laughs> You're never too busy for Howard's, co co Howard's hot made something something cocoa in the jungles of somewhere somewhere. So she's the same size as Scarecrow. Maybe a little thinner, or maybe I just cut it that way. So you could choose this one if you would like to use that, but I'm going with Mr. Scarecrow. 
And the way this is gonna lay out is the scarecrow goes here. Then we've got the little piece of pattern paper and like I say, all the measurements in your cutting guide that's gonna match up with him there. And then the green check's gonna go to the top right. And this little trees that match up with that one. And then you could put your white photo there or you could put your actual photo. Let me tell you what I did. I did a two and five eighths by four and a quarter right there. Isn't that pretty? That is some pretty, pretty paper that really accentuates this. Okay, I'm losing a lot of space. Let me clean up a little bit. That's pretty. So this is another thing I was talking about. So your mind may not register it, but see here these trees are and they're over here. So there's kind of a cohesive look here, 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 without actually spelling it out. Okay. And that might help you too when you kind of have this sea of paper sometimes. You're like, which in the, what in the world do I pick? And, uh, and I would tell you this too, when you're designing your own book with your own paper, just take a look at the piece that you have. Like, how big is it? Does it need to have a small pattern? You know, can it have a medium pattern? Can it have a large pattern? That's kind of how things, you know, in my mind are kind of broken down. And this tree pattern is actually pretty medium. It's not small. You would kind of think you'd need something small here, but it works. Yeah, I've really fallen in love with this paper. I've made this project multiple times, all with this paper to get ready for this and a double check, you know, my measurements and everything. And I have not gotten tired of it yet, which is a little unusual for me. Usually by the time I see it online, I cut it and play with it a little bit. If I've watched somebody else use it, I'm kind of tired of it by the time I get halfway through a project and I'm just ready to be done much less a whole project, you know, done over and over again. Look how cool, but not this one. I love it. Maybe it has something to do with my birthday being in the fall and I love fall. So this is the original. So this is what it would look like if you're using the, the white paper to hold for your photos. And remember we put pattern paper here. I'm gonna come back with the tags. So now this is what we have left to do. We're gonna do this side and this side. We got four more panels. So pretty. Hope you're enjoying this because I am loving it. So let's see where we are. My lady's still sticking out over here. I'm gonna fold up my right side and fold my left side down over it and we're gonna work on this left side. I mean, it really doesn't matter at this point unless you want these, you know, to go together, but I am doing the left side folded up here. So, let's see, I'm going to be using this striped paper in another photo. It's going to go like this, and like this. I'm just kind of turn it just so it's easier to get to, and I'm gonna make sure I got everything cut correctly. Always dry, dry run. Always double check yourself because even as long as I have been crafting, which I've been crafting longer than you know you would think. I've been crafting since, I've been paper crafting or scrapbooking since my child was uh, just a few months old because one of my first layouts I ever made was about her and her pacifier and she only used that pacifier. <laughs> Maybe two months, she, she just wasn't a pacifier baby. Which I'm kind of glad, but you know, there were some times it would have been nice when she was fuzzy. Okay, here we go. Anyway, so I've been doing that then and she is now, just had a birthday, 22, 22 years old. So what I did, this one, is I used this really pretty pumpkin here on this side with all the leaves and hit it with the edges here, get that harsh white edge off. And you don't have to matte, but I 
Oh no, that's not big enough. I really want to. Don't you hate it when that happens? It was so close, but no cigar. Just wasn't going to work. So once again, I'm gonna take off the major bulk here. Just gonna kinda of draw me an outline. Trim around it. So I've got my little pumpkin cut out. I'm hitting it with some ink to help define those edges. So trying to see if I need to trim up anything. I think it's pretty good. It's pretty good. So on the original, I had it over here, but since I have my photo, I may move it around a little bit so it doesn't cover up part of her hair. I may, because the center doesn't look right. I may just move it up in the frame where it's not like halfway down. So for mine, I'm gonna do that. So if you need to move it up some, you might want something here because it's kind of the same colors. No, I think it's okay. It doesn't blend in too much. I was worried it was gonna, uh-oh, kind of blend in. But I think it's okay. And it doesn't need grounding because it's on the top here. Okay, so I'm gonna do this. That. Isn't that pretty? I would foam dot this up and give it a little bit of dimension if we weren't folding over everything. So we already kind of did that. See, mine's kind of got a little bounce to it. Doesn't have as many layers on it yet and the paper hasn't quite relaxed, but you can see as I'm opening and closing my original one, it's not doing this. It's kind of staying into place. So on to the next one. Here's another cut apart that I cut out. And I just trimmed it up a little bit to make it fit the space. And of course, you've got your uh, dimensions and your cutting guide on the middle of 16. So the way I wanted to do this was, I thought this was perfect. It says, hello, beautiful, gorgeous fall, and this beautiful picture. And then I've got these strips, so we just kind of have to line this up till we kind of get it the way we want here to see kind of how much room you've got between. And don't go over where your flap is. So I think the easiest way to do this is to just start with one flap on the right, Start with this flap because you really kind of have to see where that ends because it's shorter than what's underneath it by design, right? Because you've got to be able to fold it up. So you've got to be able to see where this flap ends. So kind of leave yourself about an eighth of an inch there. I think that's the easiest one to start with because you got to get that one correct, right? Can't go over. And then We'll kind of see if I put the other one about an eighth of an inch away, how much I would have left in the center. So I think everything's gonna work out pretty well. Put this here. All right. Pretty good. Right now it's kind of maybe a little difficult to work with. You may wanna open it up and lay it flat because there's some lots of layers underneath there. Yeah, that's a little easier. Should have done that to begin with. All right. Pretty, pretty. I just, I know I've said this before, I love this aqua greenish, whatever color this is, that they have paired together with orange. It is absolutely beautiful. I think that kind of gives you a good view when I hold it like that, of what color this is. It's just so pretty. I'm just gonna flip it around, see what a pretty, pretty look that makes here. So yeah, I'm definitely gonna put something in there in a minute. So now we open up the left-handed side and let's do the two right panels here. So, we're almost done. Kind of sad after all this time that I've been working on it. I hope you've enjoyed this because I really have put my heart and soul into this. Um, I really love it. I love the crate with the mini album and I am going to make some more mini albums to fill up my crate at home. So on this one it's just kind of a repeat of this side just in reverse. I've got that uh, strip 
of pattern paper for the left this time and the photo on the right. We're at the bottom of page 16. So pretty. My daughter was so into these cowboy boots that she has on. She had bling on them. They were so pretty on her. They were quality boots. I wonder if she still has them. I'm sure she'll let me know if she watches this. But they were beautiful and they looked good on her. We're gonna put a tag here. We're gonna come back to that and do all our tags at the same time. And I must apologize. I had a viewer let me know that I left off the dimensions for this panel, and I'm not sure how I overlooked that, so I apologize. But what you're going to do is, this is the left bottom panel, and let me get out what we're going to do here. So you have a seam strip. You got a piece of paper that has all these seams running across it. So just pick a scene that you want to look at. There's a house, and of course this truck, and I think there is a bicycle. So you're gonna cut down this scene strip, three and a quarter by five and three quarters. And then the photo at the top is going to be two and a quarter by five and three quarters. So we're gonna put that just like this. And easy peasy, it's just two strips. And then you can layer a sticker on top of that, which we will do that together. And you do have a picture of this in your cutting guide so that you can see my original one. And I'll show you the original, of course, because I think I picked a different one. This time I want to do the truck. I'm not real sure why Latte likes to bark sometimes. I think sometimes she just likes the attention because she knows I'll come and see. <laughs> what's happening and what she's doing and praise her for letting me know something's going on. And usually that something going on is a bird that's decided to land on our back porch <laughs> or people cutting the grass. That's usually what I find. But here is what the original looks like. Let me open it up like this. So this is the tag we're gonna come back and put with the gourds here and here is the strip where you put your photo. And see on this one, I, it was the house, the farm looking one here, and this one's the truck. And so that's what it would be like if you put your photo. So we'll come back and put the sticker on. So, excuse me, I'll be right back and see if I can figure out what's bothering Latte. Okay, so let's add a sticker here. There's lots to choose from on this one. My mom and daddy is all cuddled up together, so ain't that cute? There's one that says cuddling. So I'm gonna hit it with some ink. And then put it kind of back in the same spot I had the original one, because it just kind of works out like that. With this picture too, isn't that cute? You see? Adorable. Isn't that sweet? They've been married 55 years, I think, almost 55. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mom, I can't remember. So now we basically have everything in place. We need to do our finishing touches, which is our tags. So let's do that, I'm so excited. Oh, you know what, before I move on, let me take a look at this piece again. Let me kind of look and see. Since I have this and I don't really want to break it up, I'm thinking I'm just going to use this same paper and make a strip there to kind of continuate that. So let me see if I have that piece and I'll go ahead and do that. Now, see this cut apart that's left over with this truck? Would that make a beautiful card? I love it, love it, love it. Oh yeah, a couple pretty big pieces left. So if memory serves me correctly, it was six inch by three eighths of an inch. Let's see, kind of like that, yeah. So, a little less than a half by six, kind of continuing that. I don't want it to look like I'm trying to line it back up. 
There we, but I do want it to kind of continue. Okay, I like that, that looks good. And I think it needs it. I think it needs something right there. Hit it with my art glitter glue. It probably would look really good if you think through it and like cut this piece and this piece and this piece where it all kind of flows exactly, but you know, that's a lot of thinking. <laughs> and sometimes I think ahead like that, but you know, we don't, can't win them all. Okay, let's work on tags now. You've got twine left, a little piece of string, you got some foam tape left. I got a couple of these left. And then, of course, we have our ribbons. So on our ribbons, we've got one piece of this um, rose gold is what it was called. I'm not sure if that really looks like rose gold to me, but that's what it's called. We got like this gold brown ribbon. I'm gonna cut it in half. And this orangey looking ribbon, I'm gonna cut it in half so, to get five. Now you have five tags. You've got two large, two mediums. Well, with help, I would work down here, wouldn't it? And one small. So I am not gonna use these strings. Be my guest if you'd like to leave them on or save them for another project, or you can tie them onto the ribbon. That technique, you know, as we go along, if you want like a double bow but I'm not going to be using those. I'm gonna put them to the side and more than likely, I'll use them somewhere else, somewhere down the line. I've got a little basket when I need string I can just pull out of. So I'm gonna hit the edges front and back. All the way around, all five tags and I'll be right back. All right, I've got my tags kind of inked up on the edges. And if you look at the top of page 17, it kind of lays out tag A, B, C, D, and E. So for tag A, what we want to do is we're going to use this um, rose goldish, the only one that we have at that one. So we're going to push it through with the pencil let me show you that again, sorry. I just folded it in half, I took the loop side, held it up against the hole and pushed it through with something and pulled it to the back. Now I'm gonna open that loop and pull the tails through. Just like that. Now you have more than enough ribbon you're gonna have plenty of ribbon to trim this down as much as you want or as little as you want. And I'm kind of cutting mine in the V shape. And the easy way to do that is to fold it in half, start at the bottom outside and cut towards your finger, but don't, don't cut your finger, okay? Because that would be something I would do. And that kind of gives you that same shape. Now I want mine to be a little country looking, so I'm going to kind of ruffle mine up Kind of let it fray on purpose. So that's what I want mine to look like here. And then these are really tiny. It's kind of difficult to put photos on there. So let me grab my original one here. What I did is I took a piece of paper and I selectively cut to get this uh, wreath on here. And then I layered on some, some different um, stickers. I'll get it out in a minute. And some more stickers right here. So that's what we're going to do now. So we're going to use up some of the scraps that we've got left over. So I'm gonna be looking for this green checkity thing. Let's see what I've got. I know I need this. I think I'm gonna be using that too on down the line. Oh, I can't get enough of these dots. All right, so for this, you wanna cut 
a little over, just a hair over one and a quarter. So right at one and a quarter would do. And I'm gonna cut this one, just like this back one, two and a quarter. So it's two and a quarter, one and a quarter. That's easy to remember. So two and a quarter by one and a quarter is what I cut these pieces for this smallest tag. Obviously I can't talk in distress at the same time. I'm just gonna kinda glue those on. And then all we're gonna do is we're gonna use up those stickers. So we won't use every sticker, of course, but like I always say, as I'm working on a project, I try to look for any ways to use up all the bits and pieces that I can as I'm working on the project because we are thrifty. We are going to keep this uh, paper pack if we have you know, a bunch of it left over because we don't want it to go to waste. We do not want it to go to waste. So if we can use up as much as we can as we go, then we're not gonna feel guilty about it if we give the rest of it away or if it goes unused. So now what we're gonna do is, <clears throat> excuse me again, need some more water. Too much talking today. And I'm a talker. So over here on the right hand side where these big tall pumpkins are, you'll see this orange pumpkin and this fall, little bitty fall wording. So I'm just gonna hit that on the edges with some ink. And you could put it in the center if you wanted to or at the bottom like I did last time, either way. So I show you how it looks both ways since I did one one way, we'll do the other the other. This teeny tiny sticker that says fall, but it just fits in the pumpkin. And I'm sure that was on purpose because they're like right side by side on the sticker pack. Goes like that. Okay, so there's the little difference there. I'm gonna flip those over. And on this one, in that same spot over here, I'm gonna use the fall, this white pumpkin. I'm gonna hit it. And I'm gonna layer on some leaves. So you could do the same, or you could just leave it the way it is. And then that word fall, that was right near it, that's got that really pretty edge to it, top bottom. Once you hit it, it'll kinda of come alive. And put that toward the top in the center, like so. And then what I did is I looked to see if there was any leaves I could layer on. And let me see if I can find the, the same ones. There's one here that's bluish, greenish. There's another one somewhere. Oh yeah, here's the bigger one right here. I'm gonna grab that bigger one by that red sweater. Hit it. And then I'm going to take this and I'm going to layer it over the stem just like that. I'm gonna layer it right here, push it down. You could leave it that way or I put one more right here. I chose a really small red one. I think it was this one here by Thankful. And what I did is I hit the brown around the top of the leaf and I cut off most of the tail of this one, kind of at a little bit of an angle. And then I'm just gonna kind of butt that angle up to this other stem that I just put on there. So it's kind of a continuation, just like that. So I did not overlap the stems, I just cut that one off. So cute, huh? Put that one to the side, that's gonna go on the front. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to our B tag. It is gonna be a medium tag, it's gonna look like this. And I'm gonna put my gold ribbon in there and it's gonna kind of trim that off. I did a kind of hatchet job at some point with this one. So I'm just going to push that in half, come up from the bottom toward the top, and then just kind of rough it up a little bit. There we go. So I trimmed this one down, three and three quarters, that's correct. So I need to hit it with some ink again. And I'm going to grab this sticker in the top left-hand corner that says Give Thanks. And I'm just gonna ink it up and put it on the side. Just like that. 
And I'm going to kind of see what's left over here, which is a little less than one and a quarter by two and three quarters. One and a quarter, two and three quarters. And I use the dot paper. One quarter. Three quarters. And let's see what this looks like. Okay, that looks pretty good. There, and we're going to layer something on that one. So if it's off a hair, it'll be fine. I think mine's a tiny bit short. That's okay, I'm gonna lay your pumpkin on the bottom of it. So I'm going to try to center this as best I can, leaving a little bit on the side, but butting up the center piece together like this. Okay. Then I'm going to look for this pumpkin here. So let's see, it's right here, right above where the truck was. So it's got a few leaves on it, like that. And I'm just gonna kind of overlap it from the bottom into that where it says thanks. So it kind of pulls those together, like a cohesive look here. There we go. So now you've got plenty of room on this one to put a photo. So the one that I've chosen is a two inch, three and a quarter. It's gonna look like that. Isn't that cute? Oh my gosh, that black and white photo is so cute. My daughter likes me, makes me look good. I don't know, if some of y'all are my age, don't you just miss that young skin and that young hair? <laughs> Before everything was dry, dry, dry. So pretty. That's so, so pretty. Okay, so moving on to the next one, we're going to do C. And it's going to be one of our large tags. Okay. Let me find my example, easier said than done. So this one is gonna be cut down to four inches. I'm gonna start at the top, go to four, just cut this big chunk at the bottom off. And the reason I'm cutting this one down so much, is it's going on the front of the album, and so it can't stick out the top it's gonna look really funny. So this one's gonna have this uh, orangey color to it so that we have one of each color done so far. I'm just gonna pull this through just like we've been doing. And you can ribbon tail the ends. Well, I only got one end going that way. I didn't have my loop pulled all the way through. There we go. So I find about anywhere from six to eight inch is a really good length to start with ribbon when you're trying to make a tag because you, you have enough room for your fingers to work even though it might be a little too much when you pull through. So I usually err on the side of caution and uh, cut about eight inches or so. That's kind of my rule of thumb on that one. So this is a three by three and a quarter. So I'm gonna put down pictures of my niece and nephew. And let me just tell you, now my daughter, you know, she's 22. So from 19 to 22, she's changed some, but not as drastic as this little one has. From 13 to 16, oh my goodness. He, his face, you can still tell it's the same child, but his face looks so different, so different. And Grace is a little different, but, but nothing like this one. I just look back at this now, and I saw him last night, and I'm like, wow, what a difference. He's got some actual facial hair now, which, ooh, oh, they're just growing up so fast. It kills me, kills me, kills me. 
So now we can kind of see where we're going here with the truck. You've got a big one, a medium one, and a small one. So once you layer them, this is how it's going to kind of look on the front. Isn't that so cute? Okay, moving on. Sorry, I'm not doing very good on time tonight, but we're going to get through this. We're going to cut the last medium, D, and then this one's going to be E. So, D... Let me see how big this one's supposed to be. Just to be sure, I don't wanna mess up here. We're gonna cut this one down to about four and a half, maybe four and three eighths. We got a little bit of room on this one. And all these measurements are on the top of 17. I just can't help myself, I keep a checking everything that I do. When it's kind of too late now, right? Everything's already been sent out. <laughs> so this is a three by four photo. I'm gonna put here. So of course the kids were playing around in between sessions at the photo shoot and uh, and their Aunt Lisa might, might have suggested that they stand like Charlie's Angels and they might not have even known what that was, but you know, we're not gonna worry about it. Let me not mess up. Let me go ahead and put my uh, string in here because my picture's kind of tall. So let me go ahead and do that one. This one's gonna have this goldish in here. So let me do that first. And then if I glue over it, then it won't matter. So yeah, I don't even know, especially if Jackson had any clue what I was talking about. I just told him how to stand and told him how to look at me like with loathing, I think is what I might have said something like that. And then I had to explain loathing, but you know, whatever. <laughs> look at me like you're disgusted. You know, that, that's pretty an easy one, right? Cause they probably were disgusted after 30 minutes of being, here, put this on here. Here, hold the sign that says Merry Christmas, even though we're in the middle of fall type thing. <laughs> look like you're happy. Look like you love each other. Put this Christmas hat on, which I always think is funny. I don't know, kids most of the time, they don't have any issues wearing the Santa hat. Boys do anyway. I know I would not want to. Don't wanna mess my hair up. Okay. All right, there's mom and daddy. So glad we documented this time in our life. Okay, so there's that one. One more, one more, one more. Okay, this is E, so this one we're gonna have to do a little surgery on. So let me put the, uh, the uh, pin and my glue here. And let me grab that one. I did not have the size that I wanted for this one. So uh, we're just going to make it what size we want. We want it to be an inch and a half wide, not long this time. And it is almost two inches or a little over two inches. So I'm just gonna come over on my trimmer and cut off a quarter of an inch off each side. And don't worry, we're gonna come back and make the angle that we want again. So we're just gonna make this a little bit thinner. And let's see, and we're gonna cut it down to, that's gonna make it, yeah, about, uh, do, 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 do. Let me try one more time. I keep measuring and remeasuring. Sorry, because we want it to be about an inch and a half and a three and a quarter. So I'm going to cut this down now to three and a quarter. There we go. That looks better. So the next step we're going to do is I'm going to take my smallest tag that we did have. I think it would be easier with the medium. Let's take this medium tag that we already have finished and I'm going to line up this medium tag on the sides and the top where this part sticks out on the smaller tag. And then you could do it with, uh, you, you could mark it with a pencil or you could just simply trim it off. I'm gonna do the same thing on both sides. Now I'm just gonna flip it over, line it back up on the side and the top where this part sticks out and just trim it again, just to give it back that tag shape. Yeah, using the medium one worked a little bit better. So it's not gonna be perfect, but it's okay. 
it gives it that country look and what we're looking for. If you have a, a punch that makes that shape, you could also do that. I have one of those, but you know, that's another way to do it if you don't have one of those punches. So on this last one, this is gonna go in our book. We're going to use this last piece of ribbon we have, this orange, bronzy looking one. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I poked my loops through, pull the ends through. You can cut it whichever way you want to, whichever technique that I showed you. Since it's country, that really that lends to being uh, free, right, and artistic, whichever way you want to do it. So now what we want to do is, I'm going to use this big sticker at the bottom and pull that off. I'm going to lay that on the very bottom of the sticker flush. First of all, like I said, I can't help myself. I really think it adds something to it. I am gonna hit it with my ink and put it down here. All right. I've been using my longer scissors. I'm gonna turn that off. Just flush right there. And that's another way to use your sticker. Do the edge there. And so for the rest of this, I'm gonna use my dots to cover the rest of this up. I knew I was gonna use these dots somehow. I just love it. This might be one of my favorite pieces of paper. So this dot paper, I'm gonna cut an inch and three quarters, a little over an inch and a half. Cute, cute, cute. Okay. One more time with the ink. Then we're going to look for that stacked pumpkin sticker and put that on top of this. All right, so these pumpkins, or they might be some melons and gourds here. I really had to work this sticker in because it was really pretty. It was really calling my name. And then I'm just going to center this to the area Simple like that. So you can see we use quite a bit of stickers, but we have quite a few left. And I show you in one of my videos from last week how I use this big sticker right here to make a Dutch door card. And I really like how that turned out. So let's go back to our book here. Open this up. And now, mom and daddy can go here. And so you've got room now where you could just mat a photo. If you had a couple more photos you wanted to put in there, use your pattern paper, any leftover cardstock you have, and just go ahead and mat it and put another one in here. That would easily work to give you one more space. And this, I wanted something to kind of tie this together like I did here with the sticker. So this, we made this tag. And the reason I use this paper is because it's got this gourd here. And this kind of, you know, ties together like that. So I'm just going to glue it on the right hand side, especially if you're holding you know, your photo here, your spot for your photo, and glue it down like that. Gorgeous, if I must say so myself. <laughs> Oh my gosh, guys, sorry that this video is about twice as long as I was hoping it was going to be, but I really wanted to show you every single step as much as I could, even after trying to cut the paper, you know, ahead of time. But I'm sure you'll forgive me for that. I hope you have enjoyed this. I have so enjoyed this first project with you. In two weeks, um, we're gonna skip a week and then we're going to do the recipe album and then we'll skip a week and we will do the Christmas crate and the little uh, mini album for that one. So once again, thank you guys for your support so far. You have been so sweet and I've gotten so many nice suggestions and people just giving me lots of feedback and thank you so much. If you like this video, please give a like, 
hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and I will see you here next week again for a crafty video. Thanks, guys. Bye.